uh, Lambert and Stream, do you know how the Doge of Venice died, the, the one on the Fourth Crusade? Um, hopefully painfully. Oh, yes. His intestines fell out of his stomach into his bullsack. You know what? <laughs> deserved. Why deserved? Because of the Fourth Crusade. Obviously. Google stuff, Iggy. Because he was playing Venice. That's... <laughs> Yeah, it's just a solid re right there. Right, so all of you fuckers that are in this game, get out of the stream. Oh. <laughs> Fourth, Fourth Crusade is good, what do you mean? Alright, uh, I'm glad that you're not joining my uh, MP, because I'd ban you from it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking! Please don't kill me. Alright, so I'm, uh, I'm not going to watch, because I've still got some videos to watch, so I'll uh, chat you later. Yep, see ya. Bye. Goodbye. Right, so what happened in the hour that I left last week? Nothing. Um, I see Clone got absolutely wrecked. Great Britain got wrecked too. This is still look going at South on. America. Right, just, just look at this wall. Look at look guys. at the British look at British depth. Right, if if we look at from I mean it's Serbia that started this war, right? So if we look at Serbia's perspective and look at that troop count. Holy shit. Them dead. Nearly 14 million dead in this war on the Serbian side. I mean, Revolutionary Prussia is noted as having minus 1 million. But is, is that actually taken off? At the film. That means he's lost that many that the numbers have just booked. But the uh, British side had more casualties, like Andalusia pissed out. And Congo. I just, I don't get why it's doing it at all. But Did fuck. you fix your checksum? My God. No, it's still doing it. I think it's your bad computer. Maybe. Army losses. So, oh. the... Um, nearly 12 million men for actually run. Stack overflow kicks in it. Just over two million, right? I believe it is, or is that just in Hoy? I'm going to assume it's here too, because that yes. would make sense for Prussia. That'd put them at about three million casualties in. Did anybody? Did it make did sense the code in as well? If it was the same, two million. Did anybody do over. any culture conversion? Lots of like, people did culture conversion. Anywhere? I think, I I don't see any. The original Mughals did a culture conversion, I believe. I, uh, I think Malaya. No, did you do that? No, you didn't. I've tried validating again. It seems to be doing something to one file. Hmm. Well, I think we're just gonna have to go. Yeah, can you at least get somebody to sub in for Byzantium then? We haven't got any, unless uh, Iggy joins in. As Byzantium. I okay. mean, and then you just talk Iggy through what he needs to do. I mean, like, because he's quite like, kind of game-changing plans. Well, you and Iggy go down to Thingy and just double check if that'll be okay. So, am I like playing Byzantium now or what? Just go Somebody. double check if that's okay. Okay. Because we really need to get going and get this done. This game. Yeah. It's already been half an hour. So, do we go to the other chat room? Yes, or go and double check. If you can do that. What do you mean go and double check? What do you mean go double well, check? Well, go and ask Yone if, and Poland, who are Byzantium's allies, if Iggy can take over as Byzantium because you can't play. Uh, hmm. So, go down to their chat and speak to them. Uh, I need to speak to you for a moment, possibly in private, Brad. Uh, it's not going to be in private. Yeah. If I can just reach the original Byzantium player. Just message me on Facebook if you need to speak to me in private. But I, we, we need to sort this out now so we can get the game going. Because it's taking too long. So are we going? Brad, are we going? Yeah, we just go then. 
Wait, just uh, let Iggy go and I'll okay. tell him what to do. He can at least go for it. Okay, right. Yeah, Iggy, Iggy drop out the game and join into Byzantium. Uh, Iggy, go into, go into the West Asia chat so I can talk to you. This sounds like we've got some saucy stuff going down. Yeah, I just got a message. We have got some saucy stuff going down. <clears throat> Is this going to be the uh, Byzantium bid for third place? Uh, is there even a Byzantine bid for third place? Let's just check that score. Hmm, they maybe could. Uh, so... Uh, Brad, yeah. um, Ben just says that we can keep it going until he jo hot joins. So if that yeah, him. okay, go for it. Um, so... He's 2,000 points behind Revolutionary Prussia and about 3,000 points behind Great Britain. So I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, shit. And yeah, um, I think is it, there's the Mughal victory card. It's on ex byzantine territory. So if that doesn't get dealt with, that's going to be game uh, minus 500 there. Yeah, yeah, that'll be minus 500. But now he could potentially have a chance if he can, like, maybe take out Prussia and uh, Britain. Britain's already lost. It's Britain can out. still keep third place, though. Yeah, he'd need three thousand points to do that. I'm not sure that's possible. I think I think the third place uh, first is sealed. That's done deal. Adran has won this. Second place, because Oda has only got 75% of that score for it being the respawn. I think if he gets brought down a peg and gets his victory card taken off him, he might get brought down to third place. Is he on just over 16,000? Yes, but it's 75% of that, and I haven't got... Which is wrong. just over 12,000. I believe so it is. So he's very close to GB. And Prussia as well. In fact, he could potentially lose second, depending on how this plays. So yeah, it all depends how this plays, all depends how this goes on. But we could see a shift in second, third and fourth. Maybe even fifth. But doubtful on the fifth. Because I think once we count for... The seventy-five percent. He's only about six hundred ahead of Britain. Yeah, and then all you need to do is occupy that victory card, and that's a thousand points taken away. You don't even need to take no. that victory card in the peace deal. You just need to occupy it. So seven hundred and fifty. Because it's only seventy-five percent of it. Yeah, we're well, bringing it down by a thousand, won't it? Cause yeah, but because you only take. Score. Yeah, so if you bring the total score back down by a thousand, you still only. I'm pretty sure that's still oh, like because the victory card only counts for seven hundred and fifty points in effect. That's what you're removing. Yeah, maybe maybe something like that. <laughs> Trying to do maths in my head does not work after a long day at work. Trying to do maths in my head doesn't work regardless. But hey. What can you do? So, um, so we finally got this war ending off. Just Great Britain that's left. Alan's, Alan's keeping faith, but there's no reason really for him to drop out because he's pretty untouchable. Yeah, and I wonder, I mean, Great Britain's reached the maximum amount of loans he can have. 390 ducats in interest. I mean, he's still... Still got a nice fleet, I believe, yeah. He's building off a lot more ships, he's got a nice fleet. Yeah. And he's... has he got wooden wall? Yes, he has. Yes, he will do. So he's untouchable, he cannot be taken down. And then there's Almost. Ireland's fleet as well, which also has wooden wall. So yeah, there's about 200 heavies between them. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's not getting... We've got the Irish fleet going around the Mediterranean. The 
the Irish fleet, privateer in Lubeck. How, how much is he getting from that? I think it's like 17 ducats. 46.96 ducats from privateering. Lubeck trade out. Se- yeah. no, 17 in Lubeck and then 30 in the Baltic. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. I should really have checked the income tab. I think it's just because, like, there's not that much in terms of trade power generators in the Baltic, so the fleet's having a bit more of an effect there. Yeah, I mean, 70% of the total trade power of that node is under the pirate fleet. Prussia looks like they're building up a lot of lights, but will it be enough? I mean, is this hemorrhaging Prussian? I mean, he is losing a lot of money, but... It's not too bad. He's got 200 ducats of subsidies from Nagpur. 200! God damn. And the war is over. Well, really, that's what what's 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 been done. Uh, Serbia is taken nice. I mean, I'm not sure if that was taken beforehand, but he's taken to Provence, a chunk of land there. It was a war for Navarra, so he's taken pretty much all that, I think. Yeah, oh, okay, Navarra yeah. all the way round, Piedmont. Whereas, uh. The brave, brave sub, uh, substitute for Cologne is getting slaughtered by Prussia. I mean, the rebels that he's got could probably slaughter him, to be fair. Uh, it's only 20k. I mean, does he? He doesn't even have an army, though, does he? No. <laughs> He'd have to get uh, Great Britain to come in and give him a hand. But I, I do feel sorry for the uh, substitute. We'll see if he can do a lot better in the next MP. One that he'll actually have his own nation for. All, all that matters is that he's running defensive edict on every single state. Just to make it as much of a pain in the arse as possible. And it looks like he is. A 118% for defence. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah, Cologne had some insane fort defences multiplayer. That, that's almost what I'd be tempted to do in the next one if I assumed I was going to die, is just stack as many of those things as possible and just sit and be a pet. Last time we had a custom nation MP, we had a guy who was Caucasian was his region and his entire nation philosophy was awesome forts, high attrition. What, like, t- two extra attrition in ideas? All the fort defence possible? It was pretty much like that, yeah. 60% corporation costs. Yeah, he had corporation costs as well. He was basically the nation you did not want to invade. He was basically Switzerland. Brilliant, I until, love it. Until his ally kind of fucked him up and he died. But yeah, that was a, that's a long, long time ago that, that was. But it's, it's viable. You know, deterrent is that nice high core creation cost and impenetrable forts. Although Cologne has got a 77k stack of uh, rebels <laughs> fighting for him. In... Oh, yes. Go yeah. on. Take them out. No general, though. <laughs> oh. Uh, we have uh, Mughals in a player war. Mughals have gone to war with the Golden Horde. Mm. They, no, no, no. Main. Okay, no. Wait. Maya has gone to war with Tapua, and yeah. Maya is allied with Golden Horde and Mughals. Okay, okay. That's a uh, Mughals has joined on the side of Tapua. Of course, they have. Cross continental war. Yeah. Meanwhile, Tapua is also at war with Hainu in the middle of Europe. I think looking at the army sizes in this war is quite um, quite interesting compared to the war we've just seen, when we had like a million troops and this war's just got a couple of hundred thousand. I reckon Tapu has got this. Is okay. Well, uh, <laughs> 
AI Golden Horde and Armenia are fucking going for it. The Mughals just don't have the troops anywhere nearby. So it looks like it's Tapua. Yes! Look at them boldly standing on that mountain fort, taking 3% attrition. Yes, go for it! So, Mayor is... actually doing anything? Okay, so they're bringing down a couple of stacks. What is his goal in this war? It's imperialism service. Violent. It's only capital okay. that's going to make a difference. So Inca isn't... is Inca... No, no, it's... Malaya. That's... the player over here. Whoa, when did Malaya take all this land? I last think it session. was last session. Bloody hell. Bleb, wow. <laughs> I mean, I had nowhere else to expand, so I had to go somewhere. I mean, you had plenty of places to expand. Well, nothing. You could just picked on the easy natives. Yeah. <laughs> Get myself stronger. How Western of you. <laughs> so, Tapiwa doesn't look like he's doing much. It seems that the entire um, army size on his alliance is all Mughals. Oh, yeah. And the Mughals have an absolutely insanely big army. I also do appreciate how they only have 78,000 cannons. That's, that's good on that part. So they have 78,000 cannons, cannons. No, no, Mughals have 80,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And he's going in it's against the Golden seven. Horde. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 go. <laughs> oh, instant stack wiped in there. That was just they did not like. That was just yeah. To be honest, Moogles could have benefited from doing this a few sessions ago. I reckon. What invading Golden Horde? Yeah. What would they have really gained from it though? Stuff, but they wouldn't have lost much. I mean, Golden no. Horde was just. It was this thing that was there, but couldn't really do much for a long time. Golden Horde, that old man that was like, back in my day, I was, you know, the king of this world. And now he's just <laughs> just a shadow of his former self. Everyone was, was so afraid of him 300 years ago. So scared. And now he's just the sick man of the world. Oh, Mughal troops have arrived in Asia, uh, North South America. And Mayor is turning <laughs> tail over <laughs> <end. This problem. laughs> <laughs> Mughal troops have arrived and they are bitch slapping the mayor. And stack wiping them. That Moogles can actually take his last uh, Diplotech and then he's got all of his techs. He also went diplomatic ideas, I guess, for the policy for 50% extra mercs. Yep, probably yeah. that one. Discipline, artillery combat ability, goods produced, trade efficiency, unrest, separatism, and trade efficiency and production efficiency. Nice. He's actually done so little of his mission tree. Well, a lot of it involves going into India, and with his ally being in India. Hmm. It's just interesting to look at. It's quite interesting when people are like, oh, you know, this nation's so powerful because of the mission tree, but mission trees don't really matter much in multiplayer, I don't think. Yeah, because unless, unless you've got some... Well, unless you can actually go and kill that stuff, there's not really much you can do. No. Right? I mean, all they're giving you at the end of the day, mostly, is just perma claims. Which, if anything, the more of a detriment if you're trying to ally somebody and you keep getting relation hit because of perma claims. You do get the core cost reduction, though, right, for having them. Yeah, you, yeah. Claims give you a reduction to the core cost, but it's not like the OP powerful things. 
In single player, no, yeah, I will agree, nice. but not multiplayer. So what's Iggy doing in Byzantium then? He's got 140,000 people stood outside of Constantinople, 80,000 of which have just sat taking attrition. <laughs> and looks to be ready to go and get his land. I mean, Constantinople is a level 8 fortress, so yeah, okay, have some troops, but... 123,000? Really? Do you really need that many? You just need a full stack of cannons for that, sure. Yeah. Have the rest of your troops ready to blitz into Mughals if that's what you want to take back. But let's go in. Oh, gonna... that's that is a four wall and a half there. Right, Mughals are still a way away from engaging anymore. What the Mughal fort wall? Yeah, that they've taken half of it from Byzantium. We got a marsh, a four. marsh, a marsh, and highlands. Mountains, mountains, mountains. Mountains, 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 mountains. Mountains, yeah, mountains. That's disgusting. Mountains, mountains. <laughs> the the only four it seems that he's got on a okay, he's got two shit forts, it seems. And he's got three shit forts and two of them are in the Indian territory. Four. There's a coastal. There's a one. Is it? Oh, that one yeah. in Arabia. Yeah. But still, like that. That's disgusting. Yeah, Meanwhile, that's... Byzantium's got a few, but it's P Persia not that is many. the worst place to invade in EU four, in my opinion. That and Southeast Asia are just horrible on the attrition and the force that you can place there. Oh, jungle attrition. That will even remind me. Oh, Ooh, hello, there's a mayor. big war going on. Look like they're going for the kill. Nepal is at war with Nagpur. Oh. Oh, well, Nagpur's but taking it, advantage of Nepal being the AI. Yeah, it's, it's just Nagpur. I'm going to check that Nepal. out after this battle has happened in South America. Because Mayor are fucking going for it, but I don't think it's going to be enough. They have got a 6 fire general. They bring in 46,000 cannons. But they've only got 54,000 mm. troops for the front row. I think after their first front row is decimated, they're not going to last long. I mean, let's, let's look at the, more, the army comparison. Moogles yeah. have got 48 cannon, uh, 40,000 yeah. cannons. If he just reinforces, his troops will hold the front row and then he can bring in Tapua. I mean, Moogles have both the dis and the morale on there, as well as tradition. Like, that's 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 a none end. It's a null fight. Although... No. Yeah, no, no. Not no. a chance. Even without the reinforcements, he's winning this. The all. Well, no, the morals are doing quite nicely, but the reinforcements come in. Yeah, and that a final new, roll. fresh front line. Done. Done for. Hey, Max Miltag, let's go. And there's, what, about 100,000 dead people just there? Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, how many is Mayor? Mayor have lost 166,000 troops. Now, they did get, well, no, 60,000 of their... Six, 70,000 are from Armenia and Golden Horde, so about 96,000. Uh, 25,000 right. to... 11,000 of them are to attrition, and he did get stack wiped a 30k down in the south. So... Uh, Byzantium is at war with Serbia and Poland. Uh, Magpur peaced with Nepal. Wait, so who declared this war? The Byzantine Polish Imperial... Byzantium did this war. He's fucking going for it. Oh my god. Yeah, this is what uh, Jack messaged me about, about the super secret thing. Th this is what it was all about. Byzantium's actually got nearly an army advantage. He's down 40,000 cannons, but other than that, he's ahead. Well, we'll see. 
So we've got 141,000 infantry on Byzantine side, 142,000 on the Polish Serbian side, no cav for Byzantium, 4,000 cav for Poland, but that's all AI cav, and then 84,000 cannons for the Polish, 40,000 for Byzantium. And then the East Nakpur basically just took its northern border and took, pushed it a bit further back, taking 145% over it. <laughs> Ouch. So we're going to have to see, can Iggy pull this off? He's got some good generals to do it, but... Thing is, why why is he bringing his armies back south? Now he's turning them back north. He, he just occupied Blizzard Rome and then skipped out so Rome and much Rome, and he's gone into the next one. All right. So while Serbia is on the warpath, they are marching down with their full force. Right, probably gonna go for the uh, the betrayal. This is a uh, this is a war of Congo honor for Serbia. Joined. Congo has joined for Mughals. Sorry for Tapua. Oh, no engagements yet. Is this where's the rest of? He's, he's got all his troops. And now he's raising regiments right next to the Polish and Serbian forces and they're now getting wiped. It, it's a secret strategy. <laughs> Maybe you should have raised them um, in Anatolia. No, his secret plan here is to trap them in Greece and hope that they're Italian? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, Serbia is very much Italian right now. Byzantium's capital is a level one f what, what, why? Wait, where is Byzantium? Well, I mean, just, he obviously hasn't changed it's it being since... Sieged. It's about to be sieged. No, oh, it's, that's it's... his capital. Oh. Oh dear. Maybe you should have changed that to the other side. <laughs> Somebody's just put into the chat, oh no, 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 Iggy is so bad. <laughs> 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 um, maybe. M maybe? I take this as evidence for whatever f opinion you want to formulate on Iggy's skill. It's fine because he's got 10k people sieging down Egypt. He's not like carpet sieging, and there's there's no forts in his way down there. He's just put 10k down. Uh, okay. <laughs> there we go. So he's multitasking. He is now you know invading Egypt while retreating <laughs> in Bulgaria. The, the hoy skills are really being utilised right now. What 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 hoy skills? <laughs> no bless him. No, I, I I can't I can't shit on him. He's yeah, only, he's been he's forced only... into a difficult. Yeah, he has. He got told by the Byzantine player, kill Serbia in Poland. And he said this to a guy who's only got four hundred hours in the game. Yeah, and it was it was meant to be Jack to me, and he's a significantly more competent player. Has he just taken more right? Has he just changed Wait, units? Significantly. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, at least when he died earlier in the game, it was a blaze of glory. Declaring on an AI and co belligerating, making them a co belligerent, so they call in the Ottomans, is less of a blaze of glory and more of a stupidity. It didn't go as badly as it should have been. Okay, so it looks like they're gonna. Are they gonna get caught? 
when are you? You're going to arrive on the 27th there. You're going to arrive on the 25th. Yeah, he's got caught. Yeah, he's got caught. He's and got caught. He's, he's not doing too bad. He needs to reinforce. It's not looking good. He have reinforcements. No, but Serbia and Poland do have reinforcements. The winged hussars have arrived outside. No, well, near outside New New Delhi. He's got. He's got the discipline, but his morale is trash. He's like, got the tactics. He's got the discipline, as you said, but that morale. His morale has just jumped up. Yeah, but it's still not enough. He's gonna win. He's actually done. He he's gone on board. He's done it. He's done it. Them rolls. That, that is more. Was that luck or was that skill? Dick Iggy lulled them into a false sense of security. It was only a minus one to write a penalty. I'm gonna say that was. Well, can Iggy now take advantage of this victory? Can they now press the advantage home? Well, the Congies and the Mughals are definitely pressing the advantage in Brazil. There may have been a fight, I don't know. Mayo is really low on manpower. Well, okay. Yeah, although he should be sinking into Mercs right now. He's also lost 12,000 ducats since I last looked at him. Probably recruiting a lot of Mercs and then, I mean, he is losing 333 ducats a month, so there is that. Yeah. I, I like the capsulizing on this advantage. He's Iggy's won now. Real Dog it's Nine. Just... Never mind. I take it back. Iggy's a micro god. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. I wonder if he's going to put his fleet to use, other than just blocking the strike. I mean, you don't need a hundred ships to block a straight. All you've got to do is just have one ship there. So if you send the rest of them out to blockade, uh, I mean, there's yeah. 15 Polish uh, transports there, 16 Serbian transports. All you've got to do is just make sure they don't bypass the rest of your fleet, blockade all of their uh, t territory, all their coastlines, and that's some extra nice war score you can get from that. I'd just like transport two guys onto the province with the Serbian transports, run one up to the Polish ones and just force them out, sink them that way. Yeah. In fact, you should really uh, bring this 10k stack in Egypt, get that micro in, maybe raise a few troops in Italia and have them start sieging uh, central Italy. Just distract the Serbians yeah. a bit. Just, you know... You don't have to do much, you just have to be annoying. And then you can use the cannons, actually, as, like, a support for the fort sieging, if you go that far. Yeah, I mean, they are level 8 forts, and... Yeah, 40%. So... Yeah... You could probably maybe do that, maybe. If he occupies the provinces in Alexandria, so does that remove the trade power? If they're occupied. Yeah, he will get the trade power. Because there is there is a decent bit getting pumped upstream. It's not much, oh, but yeah. every little helps. I mean, even if he got a load of his uh, light ships and set them to... I mean, he's only got nine. If you build up a load more light ships, set them to privateer in uh, Venice. You're going to start hurting the income of Serbia. I don't believe yeah. Serbia's got that much of an income. I no, he's not. He might be he's hemorrhaging a lot yeah. of money. Yeah, and he's got really high over... Just really high overextension. He can't even afford to call a lot of it. He's not in that good of a state. High war exhaustion. Nearly 17 national unrest. He's losing just over 200... About 300 ducats a turn, depending on the reinforcement. He can take up to 65 loans and he has 15 loans. 18% inflation. I think Meanwhile, Byzantium's only got 
too in a bit more, a bit of war exhaustion. Although they do have aspiration for liberty, which mm. is, and they do have a lot of loans. I think if Iggy raises war taxes, which he can do because he's well, he's a whole mile tech higher than Serbia. Poland has reached tech thirty two though. I think if he should raise war taxes and just play this smart, he could maybe, maybe, theoretically, um, win a war of attrition here. Tech 32 is huge, though. That two artillery fire. Mm. Like, if they've got any sense, they'll have Poland initiating all of these battles. If and they've got that any sense. Should carry it. We'll see, though, if they have that sense. And there's a lot Although of... Serbia's down one whole infantry fighter as well, which is quite big. Yeah. It's not as big as a cannon, but it's still... That's extra damage that is being done. So... Looks like the Serbians and the Polish are just happy sitting there and waiting for Byzantium to come to them in the mountains. But... But he doesn't have to. No, I mean, he Poland could go... Poland has two forts. He could go around Wallachia and up into the Polish heartland. Yeah, he's literally Poland has two forts. From what I can see. I mean, fair enough. Let Serbia and Poland siege down... Uh, the European side of your lands they're only going to siege the capital which is already sieged exactly so you've got a fleet there they can't get. cross you go up and you carpet siege down Poland I think he's just built a fort in Sofia yeah he's literally just finished building one there <laughs> a level 8 fort okay okay he can use that as a linchpin for his uh, defences Yeah, it's a, sh it's a shame he doesn't own something more where Moldova would be. Because you could probably just walk up there and then delay like hell with that one. And we have got papal separatists now rise up in central Italy. Go on, Popey boy. Come on, we you can do it. <laughs> the Battle Pope Reborn. And then we raise up the issue of Pope quitting earlier in the game again. <laughs> Let's not bring that up. That was... 300... 250 years ago. But he'd still be alive. <laughs> to be fairly honest, I do think Serbia would be dead if it wasn't for that. But, moving on. I mean, Serbia could actually nearly die this way. I never realised how much... Byzantium was the linchpin of this alliance block. Well, yeah, because Poland has got a very... Let's just do this so I can still see, what, see what's going on, right? So if we look at economy, look at players. The Polish economy is trash. It, it, it like, is trash, yeah. It's, it's, it's hot garbage. I mean... Yeah. It's running a lovely 31% inflation. Byzantium not much better at 25. How do you get that level of inflation when you don't have... He doesn't, he doesn't even have a gold mine. Every loan is too inflation. Oh yeah, <laughs> shit, loans. So many lost opportunities with Italian players. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, so... But... Great Britain is 42% inflation. Holy... Crap. <laughs> Inflation's just a number. <laughs> said Zimbabwe. Send, said uh, Venezuela. Said Weimar Germany. And obviously, Great Britain also said the same. Mughals has 0% and is the only one to have that. They should be proud. Oh, really? Where can I see the inflation? It's just in the country tab. Oh, it's a country tab, is it? Uh, inflation. Players. Damn. I mean, yeah, I've got 
Adranoda, Congo, Malaya, Cologne, Nagpur, all under 5%. And I say under 5%, it's pretty reasonable. But it's under 5% necessarily zero. <laughs> no, it isn't, you pedantic little shit, but, you know. It's the claim to fame. It's, it's not just being good, it's being the best that matters. Fair enough, fair enough. Right, Byzantium is going for it on it. Straight in on there. But he is picking the weaker of the targets. To be fair, if he gets there on that time... Is... That yeah, because Serbia smart. has no cannons. No, they do Serbia not. Has no... They have five cannons on the back row. On a combat width of 40, they have five cannons. That's insane, he's getting... That was... I, I'm going to hand that. it to you, Iggy. That was very smart. He's, he's not been rewarded for it, and I feel like that's not fair. But actually, no, he could be. If the rolls are in his favour, he could pull this off. But he's going to have no. to have the rolls, and he hasn't got the rolls. He needs that fire roll. He's not going to get it. Can his he's reinforcements arrive? Okay in now. Can they arrive? No, get there. He got a... Just in time. No. Oh, oh stack white. Ouch. That was unlucky. That was very unlucky. Ex yep, extremely unlucky. That should have... Uh, that sh that should have been a victory for him. I felt he's, he did everything there perfectly. 99% uh, perfectly. If he'd had his reinforcements arrive a few days earlier. He's still down 2.5 morale, though. That's, that's pretty big. Uh... Well, he doesn't have defensive ideas. So that's a 15% he doesn't have. And if we have a look at army quality, so we've look at morale. Poland's got 30, 45, well, about 70% extra. He's uh, running wow. the one diplo rep and 50% mercenaries policy, which I think is a mistake here. But that should be, he can take either, there's a, there is a small morale one, or he could take 10% artillery combat ability, which I think would be a lot more beneficial to him than 50% extra mercs. Byzantium's got 20% infantry combat ability, 5% discipline, 10% morale, which is all good. 20% for trade efficiency, fair enough on that one. Yeah, no, Byzantium's got the perfect... Mm. Yeah, no, I think that's what he should be doing. Or maybe okay. switch out the artillery... Yeah, it's whether you switch out the infantry for the artillery combat ability. Oh, wait, no, I've, I've looked at that the wrong way. That's a big question. Maybe you do that or not. A uh, quick check over in South America, though. And... Oh, the Mughals are... Digging for the Panama Canal. Oh, please tell me they're actually going to build the Panama Canal in the last few years of the day. <laughs> I, know, I think it'll take too long. I think we've missed our opportunity to see any canals this game. Mughals has 5,000 buckets. I mean, it's only a sixth of what you'd need to actually build the Panama Canal, but still. So I do wonder if Iggy is streaming his... Uh, he's doing a Steam stream for Jack to watch and for Jack to tell him what to do. Because I do feel like him attacking that uh, army without a general is very much a Jack play. Steam Steam tells me Jack is playing EU4. Interesting. Which would suggest that he's not watching it. Nope, we Neapolitan separatists have risen up in Byzantine Italy, but we've also got Parman and 
Swiss in the Serbian land. That's what he should actually do. He should use his 36 transports and just go into Tuscany. Go oh, yeah. kill a bunch of stuff up there and then once the army shows up, just shift back. Oh yeah, definitely. In fact... Modern day... Warfare. Congo has gone to war with Sardinia. Because <laughs> Sardinia broke free from Tapua. Uh, is this the great final war? The Congo-Sardinian war. That, is it imperialistic? Yes, it is imperialism. Okay, so the mayor are uh, turning tail and running. I honestly don't think he expected the Moogles to just, like, turn up and go, no. Oh, holy shit. Malaya is in Arabia. So you should down Byzantium. <laughs> oh my god. Malaya the MVP. Coming to save the Balkan Alliance. The lap out of nowhere. I mean, he's almost got a fort already. Yeah. Holy shit, Blep. He's a, he could in very quickly retake Jerusalem. And now Serbia has raised mercs down there and is doing exactly what Iggy should have done to Serbia. Yeah. He's doing it back to him. Because that's like, so Byzantium transfers five and a bit into Genoa, and then earns 30 in there. Yeah, why is Serbia not sieging down Tuscany? Not a clue, but the bigger question here is, the straits are secure. Poland and Serbia can't get it over. So why isn't Byzantium shifting all of its troops down to take out the main, the Malayan? armies. I have no idea. Like, there's no need for his, him to have his army up here. Serbia cannot get over. Unless he's waiting for that 0.1% attrition on that stack to eventually take it down to zero. Well, well he's suffering 4.5% attrition. <laughs> I wonder who's going to lose more men first. Oh. They're, they're, they're going on to... He's pulled the fleet back. He's pulled the fleet back. Duh, duh. Um, unless he's going to do the really smart thing. Right. Sorry. Well, oh, Congo. Uh, Congo. Out. Right, I've just got to check out this battle over in America before I have them complaining that I didn't give them enough screen time. And is this going to be a heroic last stand for the mayor? That, that fire roll zeroes all around. I don't think this is going to be a heroic last stand. And that, that 9 in the last phase. Ooh. Yeah, he, he's dead. God damn. Yeah. Oof. But and... Congo is at war with Poland, Prussia. Right oh. now. Prussia? And we, we... Right, so, right, Iggy. Put his fleet out. Poland and Serbia both marched over. Yes! Oh, the... But... Is it going to be enough? Oof. 11 morale. <laughs> if he could have separated out the stacks into two... Actually, he's no, got 37,000 troops that he isn't sending over, but I think he might still do it. Yeah, he's done it. Yep. Now go and stack wipe. Good, he's done it, yes. I almost thought that was going to backfire for Iggy then. Yeah. Damn. It's, it's good play though. That was, yeah, play. no, no, I, I will hand him that. Now, go and kill the Malayans. 
So, Congo, where are your troops? So, Prussia Revolutionary War against Andalusia. Oh. Oh, damn. Okay. And the Prussians are marching in. Oh, they, they, are, they are on that way. Is, is he just trying to, like, soak up as much score as possible? I think that's what he's going for. I do like this guy in chat. He's saying the Iggy Redemption arc. Oh, oh! Prussia is only four hundred points shy of Great Britain, and is five per month ahead. Ooh! With four years to go, this is close. This is close. If Great Britain's really going to need to push up his admin rating and his diplo rating, he's going to push up his. He's going to have to push up his ratings to start getting more points coming in. Oh my God! I did not know that was a thing. What was the thing? Prussia gets birthplace of the revolution. 50 percent bonus to both to all ratings. Yeah. That's insane. Yes, it is. Insane. Why is no one trying to contain revolution on it? Because everybody's diplos fucked. That's disgusting. Well, to be fair, nobody's coalition that's right. And if anybody's in theory deserved it, it's Adjuran for being ahead of the entire game. But he's done the diplomacy to make sure nobody coalitions against him. Everybody knew he was going to win about 150 years ago. Nobody coalitioned against him because nobody had reason to. But now people are attacking other people for score. So surely people have reason to attack him. I don't even... Attacking Adjuran at this point of the game is just... Why? why uh, wrong one. Yeah, but why? 150 years ago would have been very worth it. Oh, yeah. But clearly, Adjuran convinced them to attack Great Britain instead of attacking him. Oh, so Serbia has lost its territories on the Ivory Coast. They, Serbia they had territories? Its... Yeah. Oh, damn. I missed so much last session. And Iggy's now pulled back across the strait. Well, Malaya is turning tail and has ran back into Serbian territory. What's going on over in the New World? Mughals are just methodically making their way up Mexico. Yeah, they're just pushing straight through it. Now, the Prussians have arrived in... Catalonia. That's an obscene amount of them. Like, they, they are single handedly fielding more troops than both Andalusia and Congo. Like, Congo and Andalusia combined pretty much the continent of Africa. Yeah, 201,000 infantry against 484,000. Oof. And look at that light fleet. Prussia really didn't want somebody going to be a pirate privateering him again. Even though heavies are better to hunt pirates, but... What? <laughs> That's insane. <clears throat> Who has the biggest light fleet at the minute? Because it's going to be between Adjuran and uh, Prussia. I'm Navies, lights. It's revolutionary Prussia. With 432... He has more than the biggest trade mo mogul in the game. That's bonk. Like, he, he's, he's triple his force limit right now. He's doing that so he can get higher Diplo score rating. If you look at his Diplo rating, he's getting 26.62 from ships. From his oh, that's disgusting. He's, t he's spending 500 ducats a month maintaining that. But then again, if you look at Oda, Oda's getting 39. Because lights are actually give you less rating. Of course uh, they do. It it, goes, it's logical that the best thing gives you the most. It goes heavies, galleys, lights, transport. Oh, we've got a naval battle going down. 
Malaya has come into the Mediterranean, they are in the Aegean Sea, and they are showing Byzantium. This is no longer their sea. Oh my god, <laughs> Malaya came in with 91 heavies and just slapped the Byzantine Navy back into port. <clears throat> Because they've got, like, the Byzantines have got only 38 galleys. That's not going to kill all of those. Nope. And back over in South, well, Central America. Mughals are still methodically wait, making their way up. Because Malaya's got naval as well, so he can just trash everything that goes in that strait. Oh yeah, Malaya took naval after Adran had taken land on his home islands. I think he took them at oh. that time, he just didn't have them complete. Bankruptcy looting, looming for Byzantium. See, I'd like to see Serbia or somebody just land a 4 or 5k stack on the side just behind Byzantium, in case Byzantium doesn't see it. Occupy that one bit and then push through, try and stack wipe the entire army. He would need to secure the fort, because unless Byzantium doesn't have access through the Mughals, in which they do. Oh, right, okay. I believe. Oh, wait, no. He can no. grant conditional military access. Doesn't... I don't no. think... No, he doesn't. No, he does not. Well, no, he has it to Congo. And isn't Congo involved in this war? No. No. Congo's involved. Yes, yeah, so, you know, yeah. He could do that. It would be interesting if he did do that. Because that's the sort of thing you try and pull off when you're killing the Ottomans in single player, right? And this is basically the same thing. Yeah. Although a lot of the time with the Ottomans in single player, it's to do with them not maintaining their forts in the first few months. Of the yeah. Game. First few months of the game. But yeah, it's very similar. Byzantium could be about to lose its government. How many more months? Is it going to happen? Aspiration for liberty. 20 more months. And Byzantine yes. revolutionaries. <laughs> oh dear. It's going to decapitate the, 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 the Vesalius. Yeah, but it's not even the right uh, dynasty anymore. Oh, that's fine then. No, I because... do love how the Stuarts are in control of France. Well, that's beautiful. British France. <laughs> right, so Malaya is force marching. Are they force marching to siege down that nice little province behind Byzantium? Oh, what is he actually going to do? I think he might. Wait. Byzantium is I abandoning. For a moment. Fort on the woods. Hmm. I thought for a moment Black was in our chat and had just listened to every single word I just said, but <laughs> he's not. How do we ban the Pontifex Maximus if that was to happen? <laughs> so Byzantium is going back in on that. Oh. If if Black just sieges that one. Province on that he's not going to siege it, he's not sieging it. Oh no. Would it work if he did Adriana oh. Pole? I, I, I think he just sealed his fate. Because he just made his. Oh no, he managed to retreat in time. Because he put his fleet out, making Malaya siege down that province. Oh. So if that battle lasted a few days longer, Iggy would have basically shot himself in the head. No, he's done it anyway, because it still can't retreat through it. He's dead. <laughs> it it, it cancelled the retreat. He's just lost his entire army. He's just going to get stuck left. <laughs> Iggy, if, if you ever watch this, or somebody oh, clip that, because, yeah, please somebody clip that. 
There we go. And there's, to watch there's because that was one hundred percent Iggy's fault. <laughs> it's it's such a tiny thing to do as well. Iggy put his fleet out, stopping the Malayans from crossing, making the Malayans siege down the province that trapped him. That was brutal, like, because they hadn't realised they could do that before. <laughs> oh, GG, Iggy. Your redemption arc was not completed. <laughs> Magpur's in on the Mayan War as well now. And Golden Horde is out. Why the hell is Nagpur joined in? Uh, meanwhile, Prussia is attacking the British as well. Oh damn, he's going in for that extra score. Because we have yeah. got two years left and we have... Great Britain is still in third. Is he going to oh, hold it? I don't know. Six points per month for two years difference. That's going to give what? That's 24 months, six points. That's only going to be 100 and some extra. Nah, there's no way. Great Britain would need to actually drop to like zero per month. And even then, I don't think it's possible. Holy shit. Oh. Iggy's no longer Iggy's in sync. <laughs> <laughs> Even his computer can't take this terrible place. Thank you. Somebody got the clip for me of uh, Iggy. Thank you so much for that. That is going in the Discord and in the Facebook group. Yes. Oh, we can show the Byzantium player as well. <laughs> I mean... Fair enough, Anigi. He's not an experienced player, and he did get thrown into a situation here where he was asked yeah. to do the impossible. It's still funny, though. It is still very funny. The fact that it was his own mistake. All right, so they're going to do the piece, and then we can carry on. We have just under two years left. Right. So... I've just done the maths with a calculator. Okay. And in order for Prussia to come out ahead, they have to earn 13.4 score more than Great Britain for the rest of the game. 13.4 more? Yes. So they have to they yeah. have to get a better score than they already have, which is only possible with admin rank, and destroy Britain entirely. To actually be able to do this, Britain has managed to secure third. Damn. I mean, if they brought, what if they brought Britain's score down somehow? I'm not sure they can. Damn. Okay. Uh, what is no, Oda's score? No what is Oda and Adran's score currently on? Just out of I curiosity. Think, uh, uh, Oda will be clear because they're. I think we take off four and a half thousand from them, which puts them on thirteen in a bit. And then Adran would take off five and a quarter thousand. Let me just quickly do this. So, uh. Odo is on about thirteen and a half thousand. Adran is. sixteen ish. So, yeah. They're both well clear. There's not a chance they lose unless they go and lose the um, victory card. Yeah, Oda is on 13,455. According to. Unless I did, did that calculation wrong. No, that's, that's pretty much what I got as well. Yeah. So even if you took the victory card off them, I don't think they dropped a third. Well, no, because that was 13,455. But does In it... fact, you'd have to. It w it would only go down over time anyway. Yeah. So. I think it takes two years to go down. I'm not sure. It could take a year from occupations. So. Well, that's not going to happen now.
and the Byzantine navy is getting pretty much decked. I'm watching this bloody uh, <clears throat> Adran is coming to. Have they come in to aid Andalusia? No. Adran is they, going they, to go to war with Great Britain. They're up, they are on Prussia's side. Bastards. Trying to get Prussia in third place, and it's still not going to be enough. They've had. They actually have a separate war with Great Britain. See, I, I, this is testament that Great Britain had everything thrown against them and they're still going to secure third place. He really deserves it. He really, really deserves it I mean, for the fight that was put up over the last few sessions. Commiserations well to Prussia, though. I mean, starting out with Livonian order, he had a very, very tough start to begin with. And it wasn't until... Yeah. 150 years ago, 100 years ago, that he really started to come out as a contender and a strong power. Was well, that not partly, though, because the last Prussia sort of died and gave Livonian order a decent hand? Yeah, the last Prussia massively fucked up on his diplo and created that power vacuum which Livonian order took by the balls and was like, yeah, I am Prussia now. Although, to be fair, that was... Didn't Cologne trade them provinces for that? Uh, yeah, Cologne actually gave them the final few provinces he needed. Well, it was someone. I can't remember who it was. Somebody definitely did. Yeah, he rode the wave of anti-Prussia coalitions at a few ta Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lovinia Auto played the... Diplo game very, very well. Probably as much as Adran did. Die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become Prussia. Or in Britain's case, die a hero or live long enough to get third place. Should convert this into Vicky too. So the amount of multiplayer games we've had and we've just gone, this would be great if we took this into Vicky too. This is why we need Vicky 3 Paradox. Get on it. Yeah, because then they could have released that and have the EU4 converted DLC at the same time. Then we can convert our Vicky 2 games into Vicky 3 games. I mean, I mean, just literally like, you know how CK2's got the EU4 converted DLC? Just the same thing for EU4. Easy money, mate. Okay, Sergio is claiming that everybody is being humiliated that attacked him. <laughs> I, I would, I would beg to differ. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure anybody other than Moogles did anything in this war. Yeah, I think this was 100% Moogles. He says too little time to humiliate Moogles. I mean, he is fifth great power, which isn't bad. No, that's that's not bad. I mean, he's been up and down this great power list. He's been second, he's been not even on it. And Serbia and Prussia are the only European ones. True. Moogles says his capital is untakeable. Okay, so he, did he move? He's moved his his capital is Kabul. That's and disgusting. Seventy five percent fort defense without the edict and twelve thousand troops. Yeah, that's also you haven't considered every every right fort of around approach it. is blocked by a mountain fort. <laughs> Literally every single one. You could take every other province in the country and still have to at least take one of those five to get. Damn, and. Here we go. GG. Adran first, Oda second, and Great Britain third. 
So Adran, yeah. who started as Naples, ended up dying, went over to Adran, managed to secure himself first place. Oda, who started out as Holland, ended up dying, went over to Japan, secured himself second place. Great Britain, who started out as Scotland, the only player in our top three that start that is still the nation he started as, with all of the tax switches in between that we will not go into. Oh jeez, that, that also, was also that heresy. Was horrible. Um, just secured third place, and I mean commiserations to revolutionary Prussia. He is <laughs> in Jerusalem. <laughs> Malayan Jerusalem has risen. No, it's it's, it's Palestine. It's Malay and Palestine. <laughs> Ooh, let's start that debate, shall we? <laughs> oh my god, Malaya. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, in Holy War was successful. He's Hindu. One of the only religions that doesn't have a stake to Jerusalem. <laughs> Nobody expects the Hindus. This religion map at the end, though. Ho, ho. I tell you, Ad saying Adrian had an easy game, I, a lot of that was down to diplomacy. He was vulnerable a lot of the times. He was putting a lot of overtime into diplomacy from what I've heard. I mean, just yeah. the amount, like, I'm not even in the game. And he was messaging me quite a bit about all his plans and what he was, you know, wanting to do and everything. And if he was putting that much effort into just telling me what he wanted to do and everything, and I'm not even in the game, I can only, Im can't even imagine, really, the amount of effort he would put into his diplomacy. That was on point to play. He's earned his first place. Yeah, definitely. He's earned it. Oda as well. He's Oda, I think, has had the easiest game out of the top three. After dying yeah. as Holland, he um, <clears throat> got an alliance with Ching and Nepal very early on, spoiled up Asia, and then just sort of sailed his way to second place, fighting wars in Europe for the Europeans. Yeah. Although, to be fair, Adrian was like very clever in the way that he did it. Because he's very much in a situation where he's more beneficial to everybody alive than dead. Oh, yeah. I mean, that. What was the income off Adran at the end of the game? 1,100 ducats for revolutionary Prussia. In fact, Adran went down to third income. Yeah, but Prussia has 440 Second ducats income, worth of yeah. subsidies, of which 100's from Adran, yeah. 140 from Moogles, and 200 from... Na I've just checked the uh, the right income screen, and yeah, it's Oda first, then it's Adran, then it's Nagpur. Yeah, Nagpur is actually really good at this. Like, it's one that we've not really looked at that much, but been consistently, I'm... actually. He was definitely a favourite of Lambert when Lambert joined in for that one stream. Because it was Rattenpur, right? Yeah, it was Rattenpur. Got cut in half and then came back. I mean, Andalusia as Granada. I mean, he's stuck in this game through times where any other person would have quit. I mean, he went down to, what, three provinces at one point? Just constantly getting it's back to down. Yes. And he came back, and I mean, the, the fact that he owns Iberia, at least Iberia, is just a testament to his tenacity in this game. Yeah, although there was a lot of sympathy taken for him. Yeah, but that sympathy did come after he'd, like, yeah, no, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm going for this. Oh, someone's saying Brad. Um, I think he wants to be up. Okay, well, let me just... Hello. Hello, guys. Hello. Now, it's a really interesting question. Am I pushover because I accepted the peas while Jack was telling me not to? Um, yes. we, we will talk about that 
later because there is a clip I want you to watch that somebody did for me in the Twitch. It's beautiful. It's it so beautiful. beautiful. But we'll look at that after the stream. Um, is this? Could, is could this you just go I down and well? ask um, Lavonian Order what he's wanting? Please, for me, please. He, he just wants to be pulled up to this chat. Oh, does he? What, hey, uh, was that was it the stack web? Uh, right, one, one sec, Red. Iggy, one sec. Yeah, cool. Yeah, hello. Oh yeah, hey. Commiserations. I don't know this word. Um, <laughs> number what's number three, by the way. Uh, what? that's Great Great Britain just got number yeah. three. Well, first of all, fuck you, Iggy, because GBR got hold of the plan because of the videos, and I do consider that this is stupid, basically. Wait, what? What happened? Because you recorded the plan on the video and then you just published. Okay, but I was in the chat. You could have just told, asked me to stop can recording. Can we leave this for after the stream, please? Well, you too. It, you can sort that out another. It's 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 essentially anyways a diplomatic arrangement that we're discussing. So the best you could do is either ask or better just edit it all, edit it all out because it's obviously something the other side is not supposed to, to be fair to Iggy he was in the channel talking beforehand and you did know who's in the channel but he should have he should have edit everyone, told me he should have told me to edit second, it out but we'll just we'll just leave it at that for now we'll leave it at that at that for now second thing yeah. is i thought it Iggy, was we'll leave it at that session. for now we'll leave it at that for now yeah, i'm not you know, i i mean uh, as the first thing, the second is what happens to Curl. Hey, Iggy. What? What, what happens, what happens to, to what, sir? What, Jack? What, hap what happens to Curl? My previous country. I. The um, previous. Because it is in the list. And yeah, the score carried over, though, when you formed the nation. Did it? I'm not sure on the mechanic. Yeah, uh, when you form a nation, the score carries over. Well, the Livonian Order is not on the list. No, it's the weird things that the game does when you form nations. Um, it's... <sighs> See, it's like um, with... I think Wallachia isn't on the list. Is it Wallachia? Let me just search it. No, right, yeah, Wallachia is on the list, but it's... Scotland isn't. Um, for, like, Great Britain. But then Great Britain became Ireland... And he also became England. So, like, England's on the list, but Scotland isn't, despite Great Britain becoming England and being Scotland at the same time. So, it's just weird things that the game does. Okay. Have you seen my fleet? Y yes. Was you trying to uh, pump up <laughs> your Diplo score um, by any chance? Well, I am first in everything. In terms of score. Yeah. Because uh, lights are actually, like, the second lowest for getting your rating. Yeah, but the built very fast. And because of my bonuses, they're okay. Yeah, it was quite surprising to see how many you actually had. Like, 400 lights. It was just insane. Yeah. It's... That yeah, it is 480. 180 great free good. Well, yeah, it's just that this basically because it's the last session and everything. A lot of people are just doing random stuff. Like, well, I mean, it's not complaining because it's understandable. The last session and say Byzantium has nothing to do in the game anyway, so yeah, it doesn't come. But because of that, a lot of garbage is happening. Like Serbia, Poland, Byzantium just randomly fighting. People just randomly fighting, some people not coming, and thus you cannot really coordinate, you know, a truce break upon GBR and besieging him again completely. Because of that. Yeah, I think when Pete worked it out, though, you had to be gaining 13 score more a month. By, by the time you got to this, um, eight, not necessarily. 18, 18, by the time you got to 18, 18, it was physically impossible. Literally impossible, mathematically not doable, unless well, yeah. you managed to drag him a bit further. If, if you could get him into negative score, which wouldn't be possible because no one's got a victory card. On. Alone does. Yeah, but that <laughs> score that score already got taken away, I believe. The one from the victory which, card. Which one? Oh, from so, yeah. the victory card. So, yeah. so you would have had probably have had to have attacked him a lot earlier and done a lot more damage. To have gained the uh, 13 extra score. 
that you need. No, no, it is right if you gave the three provinces in GB to Cologne, GB would take them minus 500 over time. Because they used to own it and then it would go to Cologne. So they'd take minus 500 there, which would have swapped. Wait, he hasn't got the, wait, he hasn't got the minus 500, but you should have that from the province that Serbia took. From which one in particular? Uh, because there's one province in that victory card that Serbia owns, and he should be getting the minus 500 from that. I've seen that, where you only sure. need to take one province and you get minus 500. Isn't that normally, though, like, if somebody else has a victory card on that? Don't you only get minus 500 if it's something you used to control that's now giving someone else score? Could be that. But I'm, I'm trying to remember. would have made that difference. I'm trying to remember from last game when I took the one province. I took one province in Syria off the Ottomans. I then sold it to Prussia, and then I was getting minus 500 points, and so was Ottomans. Because we both previously owned that victory card, so. Brad. Yep. It only works in the Black, that's disgusting. Did 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 you like did, did you like my thing? I did a thing. You have a Hindu greater Jerusalem. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. So overall, like, I'm actually pretty happy because I was playing of the best country in. Quite an unfavorable position, and had to do a lot of deep blitz, we turned all over. Had to do a lot of shit in Europe to turn it all over. Uh, I'd say that I made one misslip. Like, the misslip that I could have avoided, basically. It's that, at some point I decided to... Basically, when I orchestrated the entire conflict in Europe and all that stuff, I should have... The, the point okay, was that I should I have declared you. upon Poland, Serbia, grabbed the Poland victory card, but then have the guys still fighting each other so that I would surpass, surpass Byzantium, and they would basically kill each other, and I would surpass Byzantium and then kill GPR. So that's the idea. But the thing that I stepped in is I decided to take uh, a wrong turn and also help Andalusia in the process, considering that he would be like an ally or something. He's a buddy. He's someone I know in real life, but... Yeah, that makes sense, Leon. It's that he's not. Like, I convinced GBR to go for this deal in terms of uh, uh, in return for this war. But we did have like a secret talk with Andalusia in which I stated that I will only convince GBR to go for it if he, can, if he goes on and at least doesn't fight with me. Against me with GBR, at least. Preferably, if he fights against GB, and get like half of France or something, whatever he wants, because I don't really care. Right. So, should I continue the last day, or? Uh, I'm just gonna go and speak to Great Britain, then I'll speak to Edda, and then I'll speak to Adron. So. Yeah. So, are we Great. sorting some things out before we end? Uh, I mean, we we can end now. Yeah, that's all cool. Um, because I'm just gonna speak to them. So. Congratulations, Great Britain. Thank you. You just clung on to third place by just... 180 points. Yeah, 180 also, points. That's close. Damn. I thought it will be closer. Yeah, that was, uh, <clears throat> I think, well-deserved for the shit you went through at the end. Thank you. Like, you, you took on the might of the world and... You still clung on to that valuable, valuable third place. And the backstabbing of Prussia, well, brought him nothing. <laughs> I, he was very close to that. I think he he was doing very well with his Diplo, and he just couldn't quite seal it at the end. Yes, he was. He had the best Diplo in the whole season. Better than Adrian, you think? Oh, he had Adjaran on his side. They had both good Diplo, well, almost nobody fight, uh, fought against Adjaran, so yeah, it's Diplo true. was also good. Well, let's hope uh, in the next MP you can do better than third. Well, playing to win, but we will see. 
Indeed what we shall. What region are you in in the next MP? Arabia. And I will mm. put my capital in the mountains, because that's the best province to develop. It's not arid. Oh. Almost my whole region is arid. Plus yeah, that is percent a development cost. Fair point on that one. And it's the no best farmlands. place to have your capital is in the mountains. Great defense. Right, I shall. Well, the mountains are easier and cheaper to develop than the most provinces. Mm. So, but it's quite unfortunate that Mecca won't bring me anything. Because we are not playing with historical settings, the, those things won't work. Yeah. And, well, that would be a bit um, hard if the Italian player wanted to go Catholic and couldn't take Rome. Well, who would go Catholic? Somebody who wants to go Protestant. That's a point. <laughs> well, um... Congratulations on making third place, Great Britain, and I do hope to see you making a run for top three in the next MP. Thank you a lot. Oda, congratulations on oh, second I... place. Thank you. Uh, you. You had a very, very tough start back in Holland, and, well, you've... Uh, <laughs> You managed to play it quite uh, safe over in Japan. Yeah, I think I built nice nation. Oh yeah, that income uh, you've got at the moment is... Is it the height? Yeah, it's the highest in the game, your income at the minute. Yeah. You've got incredible Even when force limit and everything. Uh, Juran and Snakpur are stealing my trade from Mark and then they can't move there my trade capital and they earn even more <laughs> anyway <laughs> that's uh, Burgundian inheritance I, I think I will see it in my nightmares <laughs> oh yeah I, I just really forgot about that, that Burgund Burgundian inher fucking inheritance up all my game all my plans I, I need to go back and I need to clip that out that needs to be something to be in the, the hall of fame <laughs> yeah. so we'll see if you can uh go on better in the next MP then. See if you can get first. I hope so. At least there will be no um, player or Joran in the game. So. Oh, yeah. you're happy about that? I think so. He's a very good player. In indeed he is. He and uh, player on Prussia. I think they are... Oh yeah, Prussia is... I, I think Prussia started off very slow he didn't really seem to be much of a threat but definitely in the last 150 200 years he yeah, really snowballed I don't think quite that well you can be very fast when you are b between russia and uh, golden horse no but then uh, pete i think it was pete brought up a very good point earlier we do wonder if lovenian order would have had the chance if prussia survived yeah but well yeah, again, congratulations on second place, and I look forward to seeing more from you in the uh, next MP. hope I will show you something interesting from the beginning. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Just be like I was hoped about my phone. I like the sound of it. So do I. It's something to look forward to. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, where is Adjuran? Europe. Adjuran. There we go, I moved it. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. You've, uh, you've come a long way back from when you started in Naples. Yeah. This Venetian's wars. Yeah, that, what you've done as Adjuran, just incredible. The diplomacy, yeah. the nation building... I mean, really, this has been pretty much just a nice, easy run into first place for you, hasn't it? Uh, not really. In the beginning, I had uh, Mutapa in oh, my yeah. back that I have to deal with. 
and uh, I can look come to me with uh, his proposal that I must uh, declare war on Ethiopia and I was confident if I am doing that that Mutapa will attack me in the behind uh, I know that I will help to win two wars at the same time but I've still gone for this and it was fun we both gone bankrupt from this war and then he become to start to play Nagpur and we are allied right now yeah that we was also a... have few wars with uh, Mughals not that Mughals uh, the previous one yes that was a uh, some excellent um, tactics of you when you trapped them across the strait yeah and uh, when we won that war at this point that uh, became a really easy game but before it was not so stable. I would say this region was uh, pretty danger. Yeah. Now you talk about it. Yeah, I'm beginning to remember that was actually, it was actually quite difficult for you at the beginning in Ajaran. But you've you've played yeah. your cards very well. So congratulations on first place. Yeah. Thank you. We all. Right, so, there we go, an end of Season 7, and we shall, uh, is it two weeks now until we begin Season 8? I believe so, yes, yes it is, it's the 8th isn't it? I believe it is, yeah, the 8th of May, so, we start the Imperator MP next Tuesday, and then the next EU4 multiplayer, which is going to be Custom Nations, two weeks. So the 8th of May. So uh, a lot to look forward to. I need to get my nation properly sorted for that. Have you still not... See, a few people have sorted it, and a few people are like, I don't have a clue what to do. So, uh, I mean, you, you've got just over a week until the deadline. I know uh, like, the, the, the basic thing to do. And then there's the thing that I like think would be more fun and interesting, but because you, you like there's there's some things that you just definitely probably have to include, like your, your discipline, your mercenary discipline. Wait, does it continue after 1821? I think it's second of January it finishes. Uh, yeah. Ooh. There we go. Uh, Malaya is second in historical scores. Ha! Is he? What? Uh, Brad, how, what did you think about me intervening in the... That was uh, bloody awesome. Yeah, I that was is... bored, so I was like, yeah, might as well. Right. Seeing Byzantium betray my Icelandic homeboys, I, w I, I was not... <laughs> right, I'm just gonna... 11th largest army, 7th largest navy, 8th highest income... Right, well, uh, thank you very much for tuning in, and for those that are watching on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. Gonna be no more uh, EU4 until the 8th of May, which is when the next uh, Season 8 begins, which is gonna be Custom Nation Multiplayer, but this uh, there will be others. So this Friday, I'm going to be streaming a head-to-head -head against Lambert in Imperator Rome. I believe that's gonna be about 8 o'clock British time. Uh, I'm going to be playing as Rome, he's going to play as Carthage. So I'm going to make sure to salt Carthage to the ground. Carthago de Lenda Est. Um, then on Sunday, 8 o'clock British time, PM, um, 8 p.m. British time again, I'm going to be playing as Egypt in a massive multiplayer for Imperator Rome. So that should be interesting. Then on the Tuesday, the Battlegrounds competitive... Well, not really competitive because first multiplayer, but our first massive multiplayer in Imperator Rome will begin. That will be at 7.30 p.m. British time. Um, and I will be observing that. I think we've got like 35 players in that already. But we'll take as many as we... As many people want to play, they can play. If the nation they want to play is free, they will play it. So we might get a few more between now and then. So I hope to see you all there. So thank you very much for watching, goodbye for now.